So now we're going to talk about uh, what I think uh, is, you know, of course it's closer to home, me being an SE and an old route, route switch guy. Uh, we're going to talk about the routers and what they can do. One of the things I do want to bring up is uh, what, what a router is, why we need them, and then we'll talk about the other capabilities of them. And uh, I want to talk about bandwidth and things like that. Because routers connect dissimilar networks, but routers also connect, if I have a headquarters location, and I have a big offices here and a data center, and I have all of my bandwidth and everything going here, this is really cool. And I have switches inside of here that are connected to bigger switches. And when I want to connect up to a branch office out here where I have you, uh, employees, I have to connect up. I can't just run cable across there and everything. I have to get a service through a service provider. It's called a WAN. Private service is called a WAN. So I have to have a router and I connect it up across the WAN and put another router there. And then they'll put a switch in here, create a LAN. So in essence, what's a WAN do? Connects LANs <laughs> across geographic distances using some kind of technology. That's what a WAN does. The characteristics of a WAN are significantly different than a LAN. If I put switches in here, I have gigabit ethernet, 10 gigabit ethernet here in my data center. Once I put that in, it's mine. Big bandwidth. Big bandwidth, big pipes. If I go to a service provider and I want to connect up, what do those pipes look like? Over here I got switching, I got big pipes over here. What's my pipes look like? Are they as big as this? Are they even close to as big as this? No, no. Small pipes. The ratio might be considered, and here's how I use it for customers. Again, business leaders who don't know a LAN from a WAN, from a RAN, from a whatever. I tell them, here's the relationship and bandwidth that you may just think about. And this is a fair analysis or a fair example. Have you ever seen where they have these big fires, where these fire departments, a seven alarm fire, these buildings going up in flames, and the fire departments pull up, and they got these big hoses, the big three inch hoses, and they're sitting there, and one's backing the other guy up, and they're squirting water up on there? That's in the land. That's the bandwidth you have. You've got all this pressure, all this bandwidth. Have you ever used a drinking straw? <laughs> that's a drinking straw. And that's about the ratio, folks. And the problem with this is, is if, if I wanted more, guess what? Every month, the service provider gives me a present called a bill. He sends it to me. The bit more, more bandwidth I want here, the bigger the present is. It costs me a lot of money here. It costs me a lot of money. It really does. So that's, so we have to really manage what goes across that. We have to manage what goes across that. And that's what we call QoS or prioritization in our routers. Our routers guard this and they're the ones who set the, who say who can go across and who can't. And these networks can get very, very big and very, very complicated. I could have hundreds of sites out here all connected on the same WAN. Now it might physically look like this, but I might have these logical tunnels that go here and go here and go here and go here and mesh up to where this per, these people here can send traffic directly to this side or this side or this side or whatever. And inside of our routers, that layer three guy that we talked about, remember when I drew up this example of layer two people and the layer three guy? The layer three guy's in charge of finding out which is the best possible place to send the, this information. And he uses something called routing protocols. Protocols. To do that. To do that. A routing protocol. A routing protocol only happens inside the routed network. 
All the routers talk about it. So if I add a new network, if I add a new VLAN over here, let's say I add a new VLAN. That's a new network. This router is aware of that network. Are these routers aware of it? No, not yet. No. So what I've done is I've actually done this <laughs> on that router. I've added a new layer two guy, a new route, a new route. And this guy's job is to promote that to all these other routers, to tell them. If somebody asks you about this new network, it's over here on me. Here's, here's where this new network is. That's what routers do, router protocols. You know, we have a lot of different routing protocols. RIP for small networks. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, OSPF, Open Shortest Path First. These are standard protocols that any router can run. Any router can run. There's the biggest form for the biggest networks is actually called BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. And that's for big networks like the internet. <laughs> that's what drives the internet. All the routers running the internet run BGP. And the, the tables are huge for that. It takes you know, a lot of memory to, to ma manage all those tables and everything for BGP. Cisco has its own proprietary protocol. It's called EIGRP, en Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. A lot of word letters there and a lot of words. It's the best of a couple of these, right? It's the best of RIP and it's the best of OSPF, all in one. It's almost a plug and play, to be honest with you. It's really cool. And the cool part about it is customers like it, and used to like it a lot, and still do. And if they, <laughs> good thing about that is, is it's proprietary to Cisco. So if they're running EIGRP, guess who their only vendor for routing is? Cisco. Kind of nice. What's our market share here in these routers? What's our market share? 70 plus? Close to 80, depending on where you're at. Matter of fact, at this edge, at these branch offices, we're closer to 80 than we are 70, I promise you that, if we're not already over 80. This edge router, this branch router, we're really, really good there, and I'll show you why here in just a second. But we own this market, we really do. And people have tried for years and years and years to get in there. How do you think Cisco has maintained the capability and their market share over these many, many years at that edge? Do you think we just route faster? You think that would do it? No. We have to, we have to innovate there. We have to make our routers do more than just route. And we're going to talk about that. But this is a WAN. Now there's other things, other ways that you can connect up. What if I used another network called the internet? Where's the internet go? Where's the internet go? Everywhere. Yeah. It's a cloud. It, it's, a, it's the second global network. The second global network. What was the first global network? PSTN, Public Switch Telephone Network. It was the first global network. The second global network is the internet. That means that if I connect to the internet, notice that when I buy a circuit from the service provider, he's saying I'm connected directly to somebody. Directly to somebody. When I connect to the internet, what do they do? What's my service provider do? He just connects me to the cloud and says go where you want to go. I can do www.cisco.com, I can do www.ibm.com, I could do www.anything. I can go anywhere. And that's why it's a little cheaper, <laughs> right, to just connect. Could I connect my business through the internet? Could I have a, if I connect my business to the internet, could I connect this side of the business to the internet and run traffic that way? Yeah, it's called a virtual private network, VPN. Now we're running it across the internet, what do we have to do? What's one of the requirements we'd want to do there? Security. Security. So we have to have some kind of encryption to encrypt that tunnel all the way through here, right? So it's secure. So maybe a requirement of that router might be to have that encryption, a piece of hardware. When we talk about SDN, when you talk about software-defined networking and everything, one of the things that we found 
is as traffic goes through a box, you can only do so much in a processor so fast. Encryption. That's where hardware chips come into play. That's one of the, maybe a negative of software-defined networking that you, we may run into. But that's a VPN. VPNs come in two flavors. They can be site-to-site -site or remote access. Could be Eddie right here. Now, if Eddie has software on his PC and he launches that VPN client and goes back through the internet to this router here, that's called a remote access VPN. How many of you have uh, CVO? CVO, they send you a router, right? They put a router out here. That creates a tunnel and that's site to site. That's site to site. Your router encrypts everything for you for the entire site back in. There's, that's the two different ones that you have. So you have remote access VPNs, site to site VPNs. Site to site could be from home with the CVOs, could be with router, business to business. The benefit of this is cheaper, cheaper may, you may even get more bandwidth, right? What do you lose with VPN? What do you lose? I mean, speed, because there's always extra headers. Mm, no, no, probably not that. I can get a lot more. Like I have, my internet, my internet connection is uh, 25, 20 down, 5 up is what I get where I'm at. And, and so I'd have a lot more bandwidth than I would probably pay for it like this on this. So, huh? What do you lose? Of, might be limited of, of access. Think about QoS. Am I guaranteed anything here? So let me ask you a question. So if I was sitting at home and I used Time Warner Cable and I called Time Warner Cable, I go in and I do, uh, uh, I try my uh, VPN, it doesn't work. I try to go to Cisco.com, it doesn't work. I look and it looks okay. I pick up the phone and I call Time Warner Cable. I finally get through to maybe a human which if it's possible. And I get through to somebody and I say, I think my internet's down. Really? Wow, don't see any service outages in your area. I can't get to Cisco. Well, do me a favor, open up a browser. I open up a browser. Did it go to your homepage? Yeah, it did. Can you type www.google.com? Yeah, I can. And it comes up. What are they going to say to me? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Have a great, great day. Thank you for calling. Problem's not mine. Sounds like Cisco's got some issue, right? Support, but you lose quality of service. If I buy bandwidth here, I get a guaranteed bandwidth. I go to a service provider and I tell them, I want one meg or two meg pipe between this site and this site. I'm guaranteed that. Am I guaranteed anything here? No. I don't even, I'm not even guaranteed a firm handshake or a thank you when I call them. That's the truth. I'm guaranteed nothing. Now we can run, you know, we run voice and video across here. That's great. But boy, when we do it here, we, you know, that's why those CVO routers. They'll put voice in front of data at your house with that CVO router going into the internet. But once it gets there, we don't know what happens to it until it comes out the other end. So there's no real QoS there. We just try to kill it with bandwidth. It works most of the time, but there's times when the internet has slowed down. There have been times that it's been documented how the internet has slowed down, actually stopped in some cases. There was like a 13 second window that was documented about six months ago where the internet froze on the east coast of the US. Not long ago. Yeah, froze. Hmm, that's kind of crazy. Think about that. What if you were doing a video across there? What's going to happen to your video? It's going to, be, it's going to freeze. <laughs> it's dead. The connection is going to die. It's going to time out. Guaranteed. Yeah. For 13 seconds, we don't have patience on the east coast of the U.S. It's dead. Yeah. So you lo what, you, what you gain in some areas, it's going to be a combination of all these things that the customer is going to have. We're going to go to a service provider, and we're going to buy a service called MPLS. What's MPLS stand for? Anybody know? Yes, sir. Multi-protocol label switching. Thank you very much. 
It's a service that they can give you, and it's one of the sweetest things in the world for Cisco. By the way, Cisco actually created this technology for our service providers. We're actually the fathers of MPLS back in the mid-90s. <laughs> Mid to late 90s, we created the theoretical how MPLS would work. MPLS is the ability for a service provider to give you a pipe, and I'm going to kind of erase some of this, give you one pipe between here and here, and you can then purchase bandwidth based on your requirements. So from this site to this site over here, what are three different types of information I want to push across that network? I'll give you the first one, data. Just regular data, right? Regular data, the characteristics of data is it's just got to get there, but it's probably a pretty significant part of my entire pipe. So I might go to my service provider and say, I want out of this two megabits per second of connectivity, I want to have a one megabit per second of that to be data. I don't care how, if it gets there fast, just give me a full meg of data. So I'm going to take half of that. And he's going to charge me so much for that. He's going to say, okay. And when I put data inside of that network and send it to him, he's going to put a label on that data that's, Eddie's guaranteed a megabit from here to here. It's just got to get there at some point in time. Right? And he's going to charge me so much for it. What's another thing I might want to send across this network? Voice. What if I want to send phone calls across here? Voice. What the characteristics of voice is a little bit different. It's smaller, not don't need as much bandwidth, but it's got to get there quickly. Got to get there real fast. Right? So I'll say, guess what? I want to have, uh, let's say I want uh, 256K for a voice so I can send so many phone calls across there. And I go to the service provider and I say, I want to put voice across there, but here's my different characteristics. With, multi, uh, with MPLS, they can say, okay, I can guarantee those services for you in my network. I'll guarantee you those 256K that go across here, but because you wanted to get there fast, I have to do some really cool things in my network, and I'm going to actually charge you more for that 256K than that one meg. But now I know if I send voice in there and give it to him and say, hey, it's voice, he's going to put that label on it in his network, and as it goes through, it's going to get treated fast and quick all the way through, and it works. Maybe video's next. Maybe I want to run video. Maybe I want to run a video stream across here. I want to take the remaining 768 that I have, and guess what I want to do with that? I want to go to him and I'll say, I'm going to run video across here, but I want to make sure it works because I'm going to have some big business leaders using this. This is going to be part of my business process, so it's got to, be in, it's got to work. So I want video. What's the characteristics of video? Same as voice, maybe a little more so in some cases, and <laughs> it's bigger bandwidth, 768. So now, he's going to be able to charge me even more for that and give me that. But am I going to be able to guarantee my pro work? It works? Absolutely. I can now push QoS that I could only do in my network here and I could only do in my network here. I can now push QoS all the way through his network. MPLS is the greatest thing in the world for us, trust me. I've been in SE for a while selling voice. When we used to sell voice across older technologies, the term suck, sucks was born. To, through all these other technologies that we're doing, frame relay, this, that, and the, I mean, it was brutal for us. So what's going to be the difference between that and a T1? Because T1, you're guaranteed. T1, you're guaranteed and everything, but why, was a, why does a service provider not want to get you, give you a T1? Why do they, the thing that, how a service provider is going to get you out of a T1 here is the same, reason, same way that Talbot sells clothes to my wife. If I go to, let's say all of this adds up to $725 a month, all these costs. I go there and I say, you know what, to heck with this MPLS and all this, just give me a T1, 1.5 megabits. 
What's he going to charge me for that? Double that. Why? Why does a service provider want to get away from T1s? Is it more real estate? Hmm? I don't know. Yeah. What's the job of a service provider? Let's all go. Let's just step back one second. Now, I, I'm sure you'll figure it out. You're smarter than me. You'll figure this out. What's the job of a service? How does a service provider make money? They sell services. They sell bandwidth. In this case, traditional services, bandwidth. Let me give you an example. Maybe I can get you closer. Yeah. Yeah. Think about this. How, what was the first way we connected to the Internet? What was the very first way you connected up to the Internet? Dial up. Now, when you dialed up, so you go to a service provider that had dial up, AOL or whoever it is, and you go to AOL and you signed up and you paid them $19 a month, whatever it was, for your dial up. And as soon as you did that, they said, here's your modem number. Do you think that they put a modem in their network and put your name on it? It was just for you? No, sure. They did. They sold that same modem number and that same modem type 20 times. They sold it 20 times. What's the job of a service provider? Sell the same bandwidth over and over and over and over. That's their job. That's their job. Why, why do they not like dedicated T1s? We love it. They can't oversell it because when I, pay, when I put that in there, I have to reserve it. And if you're not using it, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I've got that bandwidth pinned up for you and I could have sold it to you. They want to sell the bandwidth over and over and over. MPLS, they can oversell it because you know what? It's like everything else. It's the Las Vegas kind of thing, right? The odds are you using your full bandwidth, every customer using their full bandwidth at the exact same time, slim and nut to none, and slim's walked out of the building. So, guess what? I'll oversell, subscribe my bandwidth 1 to 1.5, 2, 2.5 to, to 1. That's what I'll do. And still be able to provide that service, guaranteed service, so I can get your money at a premium, what I consider a premium cost, and oversubscribe it. That's the reason that they do this. And MPLS, the beauty of MPLS is it's global. You've got some people from Perth, Australia, on the west coast of Australia, opposite of Sydney. Probably smarter people there. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. All the smart people on the other side live in Melbourne. <laughs> see, see, I'm trying to help you out there. Uh, so, uh, so if I wanted a circuit from Raleigh, North Carolina, I could go to AT&T and say, guess what, or uh, several service providers, and say, I need a circuit because I'm opening an office in Perth. And they can actually give me MPLS. I couldn't do that with uh, Frame Relay. Frame Relay would not work, trust me. You, can't took, you couldn't take frame rate on older technology and have one service provider feed to another to another. I tried it, folks. I tried it many, many times. And it just, it was nothing but the headache. That's where the part of this bald spot came from. Really. Well, you think about this, a SIP network. What's SIP? The term here, SIP, came up. What's SIP? Session Initiation Protocol. Where's it coming from? Who's it come from? SIP is being able to take a traditional T1 P, uh, a PRI that we might use for voice and uses IP type technology behind it for that. So yes, in this one delivery mechanism, if I want to go to that same service provider, he'll just add more bandwidth and say, I'll send your SIP trunks in there too. Okay, so yeah. you, would you need an MPLS network? No, absolutely not. You okay. certainly wouldn't. You certainly wouldn't. But could it, could it deli be delivered on the same physical wire? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Because inside of the first router, when I send that, what he's going to do is he's going to say, when you send me this IP address, this network, I'm going to expect that that network is your data network. So he's going to say, you're going to work with him and say, the, anything that comes to you at 10, 10, 10 network is my data. So in this local router, all my data that I send across there is going to come to you in this IP form. And then he's going to, at his first router, he's going to send it into his network. The first router, uh, the first switch or router he has is going to put that label on it and send it through the network as fast as possible. 
If it's oversubscribed? Yeah, how, how, what if everybody's hitting it at once? You know what? If it is, what's the chances of that? And again, mm -hmm. the chances are zero for that, really. Why? Because not everybody hits enter on their keyboard at the same time. Nobody's going to do that. They've proven it over and over and over. Yeah. The T1 is I go to, I physically take a 1.5 meg out of service for everybody else and give it to you. What's the abbreviation after this T1? T1 is, is a, it, it's actually a transmission layer one. It's actually 1.5 megabits. It's the equivalent of an E1 in Europe. So if you hear T1, E1, it's the, the way we divide it up. We'll talk, we can talk a little bit more about that in telephony. But in essence, it's 1.5 megabits of connectivity that was generally used to support 24 phone calls and voice. But what we did is we took the dividers out and we just used it for data. The thing about it is, is once I put it up, you, nobody else can use it. MPLS is great for us, folks. It is really, really, really good for us. Yes, sir. Oh, it's, it's probably 70, 80 percent, 70 or 80 percent at least. Seven. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. Uh, from a service provider perspective, if you're not doing MPLS, you are so far behind, you're probably, you know, still selling rabbit ears for TVs <laughs> kind of thing. And uh, so all the service providers have, are, are using it, and all of our customers are using it. All of our customers are using it. Does that make sense? This is a WAN. The reason I go to this detail about this is as a consultant, as somebody who sits sometimes beside a, uh, uh, a customer, I was at a customer who had an RFP out and they, I was there doing something else and they said, well, we've got some, some partners coming in and the RFP was for WAN services and all this. And they just asked me to set in on the, the, it just so happened that they were having all the people in that day. And they asked me to do that. And I, I was there, I was kind of done. I'd like to have got on an earlier flight, but I said, no, I'll stay till the end of the day. So I checked out of my hotel. Um, my, my flight was originally, I could have moved it up earlier, but I didn't. And so I sat in three partners of Cisco came in. And three people, two of the three, created new technologies right in front of my eyes. Right in front of my eyes. And here's where the technology is. Service providers call that, we call this MPLS, but service providers actually put another couple of letters on the back. VPN. We've talked about what a VPN is security and all this, that, and the other, side to side of remote access, and it, requ it requires encryption for us across the internet. That's what we believe VPN is. So, this person happened to be in healthcare. They were transmitting secure documents across from site to site. So, in the first session, when the first partner came in, they said, we're gonna use an MPLS VPN now, for the service provider, it is a virtual private network. They are selling a part of their network to you, so that you get a virtual part of their network. That's why they call it a VPN. My question for you is, is there any security in that, any encryption? No, natively there's not. You know what the difference between my traffic and your traffic on their network and this VPN network is? What's the difference? One tag. <laughs> It's called a customer tag. In MPLS, you can have up to seven tags on all your traffic, depending on the characteristics of what the person wants to give you. The first tag they have is a customer tag. That's the only thing. There's no encryption in it. If I was in their network, I could actually look in there and look at your data if I wanted to. Just like I used to be able to listen to your phone calls when you used to call, and if you do that. So, this customer of mine, they said MPLS VPN, and he just automatically asked, he says, well, you know, I've got a lot of confidential records and everything. If you're giving me an MPLS VPN, then you're securing my, my transmission across there. Yes, sir, we are. That's exactly what the partner said. Yes, sir, we are. And I'm sitting there, my jaw probably dropped, and I said, 
Can I just ask a question here? <laughs> you're, I'm just curious. So you're saying that they're, you're encrypting their traffic across. Sir, it's an MPLS VPN, virtual private network, it is encrypted. We encrypt all of our customers' traffic. I said, you really do it? And I knew they didn't. I said, is that an additional service you, you give to these people? Do you give, it's built into the system, sir. It's a VPN. And in my mind, I said, as soon as you get your little butt out of here, I'm gonna, you'll never get this deal if I have anything to do with it. They were kind of belligerent to me, but they didn't listen and they didn't understand their technology. So they walked out. Next person comes in about a half hour later after we'd had the discussion. I did a little whiteboard. Showed the customer what I was talking about and he goes, oh my God, those people are never getting my business. Next person comes in. Almost the first question, can you explain to me an MPLS VPN <laughs> from the customer? Well, it's a, hang on. Can you explain to him they had their engineer? The engineer goes into all this detail. After he goes through his yin yin yang, customer asks him, so my, my information is going to be encrypted? Yes, sir, it is. I almost fell out of my seat. I want, I, the second time. Again, creating new technology for our customers and everything. The third person got it. No, sir, it's not. But if that's a requirement, we can actually do that at an additional cost. I'd have to do this and all this, but we can do it. It is a ca capable. These service providers can encrypt it. Absolutely, to can do the encryption if you want them to. Probably cheaper for you to do it yourself, but that's okay. <laughs> There's a big difference in this. And from that day on, I said, every time I touch about WAN and everything, I'm teaching this. Just so we know about it. Just so we know about it. VPNs are the most, I mean, MPLS is the most beautiful thing in the world for me. Because I'm an old uh, 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 IP telephony guy and all this, and I fought the battles when we didn't have it, I love it. Because now I can push my QoS all the way through here. I know how much bandwidth I got, I can put it through there and push QoS through there. But this is not encryption. We can encrypt it, we could do it at the router, or you could buy, get it as a service from the service provider. But it's not natural <laughs> in MPLS. That's a virtual private network. I have a friend who's a CCIE, he's done all these big networks and he's been doing MPLS forever it seems like, and his name's Stefan, he's Swedish. And he can't say the word MPLS. He can't. He says MPLS VPN. It's one word. He says it funny because he's Swedish. But he says it, MPLS VPN. In our minds we think a VPN is secure and everything, it's not. And for our customers, when we start talking to them of the, you know, financial institutions, healthcare institutions, all this, we better be sure that we know what we're talking about. Because we're going to go in there and talk about moving voice and video and all this, that, and the other, and they're going to say, oh, my God, that's great. We better consider security. Because I'm telling you, every, from, from now on, in the next five years, there's going to be more security breaches and everything that are going to drive more and more legal needs to secure all this stuff with telepresence and everything else and that's going to be a bear it's going to be a bear why do you still have their own proprietary routing protocol because we can lock people into our routers just kidding just kidding why because the open standard protocols were great they were great but it took a lot of processing power and all this that and the other it took a while for them to converge again these were standards and we could do them, but we thought there was something better. And what we did is we designed something better and then we implemented it in our software better and it works and, we, and we're not going to let a standard happen. We're not going to turn that into a standard. And we want to do that. It's our intellectual property on how we came up with it. It's just like why Coke doesn't give all everybody else the, the formula to Coke. We've got our own. We, we did it ourselves. And EIGRP is great. Now, a lot of customers say, I'd rather do OSPF. Well, whatever. Cisco router can do OSPF. Do as good as any other router. But EIGRP is our bucket. It's easier. It's easier. 